Hello, and thank you for joining us today for Introducing Friends. Today's episode for Introducing Friends will be Warhammer 40,000, if the Emperor had a text-to-speech device. Leading the discussions will be our Chapter Master, George, a.k.a. Wolfboy. Joining him will be our Forge Master, James, a.k.a. Griever. And also joining will be our Head Librarian, Chelsea, a.k.a. Stargal. So, can we agree to never go through the warp again? I don't mind the warp. I know you don't, but a lot of happenings happen. Yeah, they did, but I mean, we all survived. We're not dead. We escaped Nurgle's realm unscathed. You say that, and yet I was hacking up a lung at one point, and I heard a little uh, cough or chuckle, one or the other. Well, okay, well, going to Nurgle's realm was not my idea. That's not my realm of expertise. Uh-huh. Come on, Zinch and Nurgle, come on. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm just going to stay here in my shop. I'm hey, sorry yeah, that all you that You escaped. <laughs> yeah, we escaped. That, that, that That's all that matters. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hey guys, <laughs> welcome back. Uh, We're not yeah. dead. We're sorry. Somehow. <laughs> uh, yeah, a, a lot's happened, but yeah, we're back. We're back, and we're going to be taking a dive right back into where we left off in. Introducing War friends. Warhams. Oh, wait. Wrong one. Wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> kind of wrong one. <laughs> Yeah, we'll be diving right back to introducing friends to if the Emperor had a text-to-speech device with the episode that we left off of last. <sighs> oh, yeah, that's right. I kind of forgot where we were. <laughs> it was a lore dump. Yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. So we're I'm, sorry, it, I'm sorry, it has been a while. We've done a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We, we have. Life, life happened in quite the way. Yeah, between life happening to all three of us in one way or another, also some equipment being built. Which we hope you went to go and watch those videos. If not, go check them out on my channel and also uh, the probably previous to this video. Yep. I now have a functioning computer. And it is After so many And it glows warp lights. Yeah, I had a feeling that you would appreciate that most. It's so pretty. It's blues and greens and purples and reds. See, she really is a, a zinchite. She basically has, has a bird fascination like magpie. I, yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. I love all the shiny things. Well, I was going to say, to be fair, at least on the Magnus thing, those feathers that Arlene painted on Magnus's cape came out really, really nice. Oh, they're gorgeous. Yep. I, was, I was quite impressed with it. Same, to be honest, especially since it was the first time for a 40k model, so. Yeah, and I'm going to get a lot of, I, I may be getting a little uh, pushback on this, but uh, I'm going I'm to just say this. Those things are fucking complicated. What? Uh, model painting is very difficult, and I am amazed anyone who actually does this is a hobby. Okay, I, I will say this. Now... Chelsea, you saw the nice condensed version of it in the video. Overall, Magnus took a combined total of about eight hours of work, three and a half of assembly, and about five hours of Arlene painting. Yeah, he's a drama queen. I can see that happening. Uh, for all For anyone in the audience who actually does the minis, I have a newfound respect for you. So. Yep, and there's enough push from the community asking us to start doing our own. And to be honest, I wouldn't mind picking up the uh, brush myself. Oh, fuck. I can attempt, but I make no promises. <laughs> hey, that's all I'm going to do, is basically make an attempt. If it looks like something that that a, a four-year-old basically slapped together for a kindergarten, kindergarten project, that's the best that I can do, then pff, so be it. I did it. It's all that matters to me at the end of the day. 
I have a new project for Arlene. No, no, no. You have to do it yourself. Do not make Arlene do yours. Why not? It's because it needs. He no. If we're each going to do our own, then he needs to do his own. If we want Arlene to join the uh, VMT, then she can paint her own. It does kind of make me question what faction she would choose. Hmm. Pro I'm going to guess um, Salamanders. We're going to have to see. Maybe She's be kind a... and she likes building things. Hmm. I could see that. I don't Fair. know. Maybe we can ask her on uh, your channel one of these days, James. Yeah, we'll, 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 maybe we'll attempt that one day. Sweet. Okay, so we're going to go right back at it with If the Emperor Had a Texas Speech Device. Um, I believe this is the one where we're going to get a lot of information all at once. So please, ladies and gentlemen, have your ears open and ready. I have my notes set aside, but... I believe this episode is going to be mostly uh, self-explanatory, but... Let me strap in. Please do. And God help you if you hear the Strip Stody's theme music in the background. <laughs> George, why? Hey, he's the one strapping in. <laughs> I like to be mobile. <laughs> I said, no. in not on. Okay. Oh, Zine, help me. <laughs> I think, did I win? Did I just win? I think I won. Yes, you won. No, 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 no. That was not. That was not a no. She didn't say no. Uh, she just so said help me. Yet. Didn't count. Okay. Yeah, I said Zine, help me because you slanishy people are too much. Whoa, whoa! Who said anything about slan? Okay, moving on. <laughs> Strip stodies. That's all I need to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're ready to go, ladies and gentlemen. In three, two, one. Oh, I've missed this opening. I, I love that opening. Interested? Not really. I'm just, just making sure you're not fighting like the wrong you have to eat like tentacle monsters <laughs> over for a party or something. I'm afraid to make we're gonna hide. Fuck the page, I'm talking to you. Is that a talking to Can we please have a little bit of trust at this point? I mean, of all the places in this expansive galaxy, this isn't the most comfortable location for me to be in. Besides, I'm not Fulgrim. So you're telling me that succulent food and a curious I'm not atmosphere Fulgrim. and natural beds are less comfortable <laughs> than a realm that is literally a collective seizure? Eh, if you had more mental capacity than a box of Grox manure, maybe you too would appreciate its own unique majesty. This assumes that I'm insane enough to want to. Nevertheless, you just being here is a sign of trust in my lord, is it not? Eh, perhaps. Crazy damn skeleton. <laughs> 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 Why are you still here? Well, okay, tell me. What are you actually doing? Don't mistake my question for curiosity, I'm mostly just concerned. Research, observation, experimentation, calming my nerves, listening to the whispers of the warp, passing the time of day, and so on. Very chill. Albeit like. it's pretty damn hard to get a good focus uh, in this place with no. father around, finding any warp traffic to spot oh, out tinted gold and full no, of No, I can't, that's the thing. It's like trying to remove a demonic incursion from your rectum. No, I've got my heresy detector in my chambers and like Pyrrho not from here. Ow! Ow! Stop that! Stop what? Stop dazzling me with your ignorance! Your shiny half-baked <laughs> head line. is burning through my retina <laughs> like an acid made of stupid- Ah! Seriously, though, Hello, have you Magnus. still not got that this heresy expression you speak of is just your Imperium's excuse to put a giant bolt into the head of anyone who goes against you? The Imperium is like a child in a my dad is better than your dad argument that received the right to kill anyone that attempts to argue back, you witless dildodies. <laughs> <laughs> Favors by wearing the skin of your enemies, for example. For your information, I have never worn the skin of my enemies. 
Do I look like a Necron Flayer to you? Do you have heard of Necrons in your thousand sons? Do you have pretty similar motives nowadays? Yes, we've already sent the cease and desist order. They're just being ferocious plasteel dicks about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's an actual cease and desist. I love it. <laughs> It's got the Thousand Suns symbol in blue and the Ouroboros and everything. <laughs> Regardless, you still look like you woke up on the wrong side of the Iron Terror. I do see where you're coming from. All the decapitated heads and giant spikes do make it look like we're compensating for one thing or another. Like that could be some parents. But to be fair, <laughs> given your Imperium's alarming <laughs> obsession with skulls, I'd say you have some issues of your own. Nevertheless, did you only come here to watch over my shoulder, or did you have some other reason? Well, I actually wanted to ask you something. Well, go ahead. I break the monotony. I've been wondering. Mm. I served my Emperor for somewhere around 11,000 years or so. I don't really keep track of him. And even though he's my, uh, our father, I don't actually know all that much about him besides what I've seen with my own eyes. Isn't that enough? Of course it is. After fighting this side and hearing his dreams from humanity, no sane man could not appreciate his majesty, wisdom, and might. Are you directly calling me insane now? Truly, he is the one and only <laughs> worthy leader of mankind. But where did he come from? Did he have parents, or did he just, I don't know, Crawl out of a gold deposit? <laughs> Not that it's a bad thing, of course. I'm sure it was the most glorious deposit in the world, man. <laughs> oh, hungering for some crisp, luscious knowledge, are we? How fascinating. I thought you companions were especially trained to act as completely uninteresting in personal automatons. Well, truth be told, I think as time has gone by, most of us have either gone a bit into the cuckoo's nest or have managed to obtain some uh, form of rationality. Actually, I'm the one exception. Everyone has completely lost their mind. Hey, kids, in. want to go and take a swim in the Promethean pools with us? No. Fine, be that way. As I was saying, <laughs> I still have a right to be a right part of it. I live for him. I follow his every word and I never defy him. And I would happily give my life for him. But, well, there's the thing. I'd happily give my life for him. Implying that you can actually be happy. Which also implies the fact that you have thoughts and feelings of your own. Which subsequently implies you aren't an incredibly stale person whose personal interest can be summed in the words standing around. I guess that's part of the reason why I was elected to the position of Captain General. After millennia of isolation and your occasional murdering of demons trying to creep in, I'm the one and only companion who's not batshit insane. And I suppose that's also part of the reason why you're still wearing your armor after all this time. Yeah! Or, uh, well, not all this time. Oh? I went through a... Oh? Phase. <laughs> I can't say I'm particularly proud of it. Those loin clocks really don't leave much of the imagination, you know. Why they look? I swear they contain some of us. Anyway, oh, no. as you oh. ask. Ah, yes. The subject. Okay. It, I no. Pretty much as long as humanity has, and that he has gracefully guided us through all of that. George, all I can think is, what was she hey, thinking? Was the Jersey, the <laughs> of our and if he made us, what made him? And if you didn't make us, what made us? Ah, the oldest question in human history. What are our origins? Sadly, I have little help to you in that field. Been too busy oh, comprehending the Ethereum and superhero comics. Really? Didn't the Emperor tell you himself? You and really- he hey. Do okay. <laughs> you really think Emperor would Actually, he willingly never told give me that much information? about his own past or humanity's origins. Perhaps he didn't want us to know since he's always been so exasperatingly introvert about things like teaching. That, or it's because I never Point. really asked. May have been the latter, all things considered. And no, I don't have an old book lying about that specifically tells us where we all came from. Only my neurotic brother Lorgar would have the talent to write a fictive suicide of that caliber. <laughs> Besides, even if I had a book like that, all the exciting demon tomes with screaming faces and beware signs lying about would probably just make it look severely unappealing in comparison. Gah, I suspected this much. <laughs> and I've looked through all the tomes and slates in the palace's libraries. All the data storage and archives, the ancient texts and journals. I've even looked through albums of travel photos of Terra's sake. But I couldn't find anything about the time before the Emperor conquered Terra during the Age of Strife. If you are that curious, why not just ask Father himself? Yeah, I don't know. Multiple reasons. His mind is so splintered that remembering such ancient knowledge might make him fling his skull across the room like a bowling ball. Hi, Centurion. That and I'm much unsure if he actually <laughs> wants to tell me. I mean, if he never told you, why would he tell me? 
Well, he does seem to like you, despite him being grumpiness incarnate. He relies on you to listen to his boundless complaints and to inform him about... I love about that they actually spelled shit. like L-O-I-K. I was thinking that too. Trust you like, more than he trust me or any of his other sons. He said it with the accent. Actually, are you sure you're not his wife or something? No, of course not, but... Wait, really? Are you sure you're not his wife? You think so? <laughs> Indeed, stepmother. First of all, quiet you. <laughs> like, he really tells us he's quiet, you. So I might just go and ask him then. Rarely you do wrong, that. Really, Magnus? Actually, don't you want to come too? Intelligence no, I'm and I'm gonna practice for that talent kind of. show that I heard is coming up next Thursday. You say they're batshit insane, but your fellow companions do seem to know how to have a good time. Uh, unless you want soggy hair and stay down for a week, I would highly recommend you drop that. Why should I... Oh. Oh. Uh. Ellipsis. Slanesh. <laughs> I love that illusion. So let me get this <laughs> straight. Lipsis. You mean to say that you really have no records of human history before the Age of Strife accessible within the Imperial Palace? No, not really. Most of it is so heavily censored by the Ecclesiarchy and the Inquisition that more closely resembles a barcode than it does anything else. So you have no <laughs> recollection of the tales of the Old Ones, my own conception, the Rebellion of the Men of Iron, or any other tidbits of humanity actually kicking ass? Fuck off. Incredible. <laughs> I honestly thought I'd hit the greasy fucking bottom of this shithole when you told me of the Inquisition's activities, but I'm just now realizing that I'm only scratching the surface of this frozen ocean of ineptitude. It's almost as if nobody wants to hear about how our people weren't the be-all and all of civilization in the cesspit of a galaxy. Shucker. <laughs> um, yeah, funny that, isn't it? Right. This is something that I shall now unfuck post haste. Magnus, fetch some parchment and do what you do best. Take notes. Do not worry, I always have paper with me. What a fucking nerd you are. Anyway, <laughs> I want you to write down everything I am about to tell you. And when I'm done, rewrite the whole damn thing as a grand historical document. Then I want you to start covering it in holy seals and shit, and then throw it into a pile of dirt for a while, so it gets that shitty old paper look. That'll make stupid people think it's inherently trustworthy. Oh, and shiny britches? Yes, my lord? When Magnus finishes his chicken scratchings, I then want you to take this document to the scribes, have it proof to make sure he doesn't sneak in any mimetic chaos bullshit, then have it mass produced and distributed all across the galaxy to all people of authority. I don't care if you literally need to ram it down their fucking throats, just make sure they read that shit and understand it. No spam box filter shall stop my glorious wisdom this time. Yes. Now, <laughs> this gather time. my children, for it is grand story I remember there's time. a bit with the Inquisition. Q visuals. Oh, uh, yeah. In the beginning, there was nothing. The nothing is nothing that has ever not Jesus existed. Shit, <laughs> the nothing just not kind of sat about and unexisted, not bothered <laughs> by any such thing as existence not. or reality. There may have been some bits of heat energy floating about, but that shit doesn't count. Eventually, however, this frigid, lonely expanse of plot hole level nothing got sick of being nothing and decided to get a job. Fuck this shit. So all the energy bits sucked themselves into a ball smaller than the level of progress made since I was put on this over-glorified Porto Potty lighthouse. <laughs> Then, the energy exploded with the force of something that you'd compare giant fucking voice. explosions to. There has never been, and never will be, an explosion as big as this one. It was so big that it's literally still happening right now. Wait, what caused the heat to compress and explode like that? I don't fucking know. Dark matter, plane walkers, traversers, a bunch of geeks with nothing better to do making a badass fictional universe for the purpose of inevitably selling inordinately expensive plastic miniatures. <laughs> it could have been anything. <laughs> so after the mega explosion, atoms started to take form from the massive amounts of energy that floated around, and these atoms started recombining, collapsing, and forming themselves into elements, molecules, and compounds. These substances, unlike energy, had mass and decided to get closer to each other because now this new thing called gravity applied to them because that's the just what fucking happened fuck this boring comic shit let's get to the good stuff as matter <laughs> formed into big lumps these lumps became celestial formations stars planets nebulas asteroids comets 
Eventually, due to conservation of energy and some weird chemical reactions, life eventually formed on these lumps of space crap. Supposedly, the first life that came about was a race of beings that became known as the Old Ones. The reason for this nickname is that they were the ultimate rulers of reality and evolution, and they were really fucking old, go figure. These beings are the shitty neglectful grandparents of all that is life. They evolved so damn hard that they eventually became spiritual entities, discovering the so-called realm of souls. As a side note, as you can see, they looked something like big, fat amphibians, before they evolved into beings of pure power. So that's a lot of progress for a bunch of giant hyper-intelligent toadmen. Come to think of it, Fair that enough. sounds a lot like the Administratum. Incomprehensibly powerful for almost no reason. Toadman, you rose to a typewriter with a fucking mouth. Anyway, <laughs> they then decided to create other species for shits and giggles. Some said that they created all life after themselves, but I'm not so sure on that one. Perhaps they helped push the boat out, but they certainly didn't fucking build it. So these old ones didn't create humanity. That's what I just said, you hollow-headed ninny. Most life evolved in one way or another, Oi. and anyone who doesn't accept that is probably really, really, really drunk. Lorgar's going to have fun with this. <laughs> you know, he definitely sent it to Lorgar. Next to yeah. arrive were a bunch of floozy fucking milksops that you would recognize as the Eldar. Due to the fact that, early in their evolution, they reproduced like space rabbits, they actually ended up becoming the dominant race in the galaxy. The old ones were more like spread out singularities of imbalanced min-max hanging around here and there. But neither race really cared for each other, so they coexisted peacefully, one spreading like a pointy-eared plague, while the other pooped out orangutans, more frogmen, and races with unpronounceable names. But then, came the Necrontier. Wait. That sounds familiar. Strap yourselves to something, because here comes the most obvious plot twist of the fucking century. The Necrontier were salty assholes, because they had evolved on a shitty, radiation-blasted planet. They built underground cities that seriously looked like depressing tombs, because their life sucked so much that they would rather wait out their own death, than do much else. After years of being subservient to their animosity, like an entire race of entitled middle-aged people, they became envious of both the Old Own's incredible powers, and the Eldar's massive galaxy-spanning growth. Of course they were little more than an irritating bunch of self-pitying tearjerkers to such powerful races. Eventually, however, the spite of the Necrontier became so mighty that they started hating all life in the galaxy, even themselves, and decided to start murdering literally everything. However, they soon realized that manually making sure every single grass straw on a planet was dead was really fucking tedious, so they started snooping around for something to make into a super weapon. That led to them finding a weird bunch of gas orbiting the super radioactive star that had turned their planet into the empire of atomic bombia. They suddenly noticed that the gas was feeding on the very energy of the star. It turned out that the gas was alive, but not in the same sense as other life forms. <laughs> it had evolved oh my in God, a whole that different way. It was technically even older than the old ones. Of course, all it actually did was eat radiation and, you know, be what is basically celestial fart gas. But of course, these uh -huh. assy Necrondards just had to fuck with this peaceful, sun-eating anomaly. They proceeded to collect as many of these weird sentient gas clouds as they could find and forge bodies of living metal for them, because what isn't that the first idea that comes to your mind as well? They used the gas's own radiation-eating abilities to lure the dormant consciousnesses of them into the bodies they had made via the use of a bridge of starlight, or some pretentious shit like that. So after eons of peacefully orbiting stars and eating radiation, these beings which knew no other need than to drift around and consume were suddenly given incredibly powerful physical forms and hyper-computerized synthetic brains to give them all the knowledge the Necrotry hearts had collectively acquired. As you can guess, this went swimmingly for everyone involved. Wait, I think I can guess who these guys are now. Congratulations. These gas entities, they became the Catan. And the Necrons here became the Necrons? Give this man a PhD I would have because laughed that's some serious wrong. brain power for a giant armored yeah. potato chip. These but guys yes, became the orcs. These beings <laughs> and their fancy new bodies with their big new brains were named the Catan by the Necrontier and were worshipped as gods. 
the cat you know, weren't nice cars though. Probably they get it absorbed wrong. all the living metal the Necron tier had amassed and used it to transform this massive species of psychopaths into a race of living, murderous machines who mindlessly serve them. They Look also ate games. most of the Necron tier's souls while they were yeah. at it because they were ungrateful assholes like that. That's also when these mounds of fluid dickery discovered that souls were far more appealing than space radiation. I guess souls have more nutrition or something. So the Catan started the looking back through the extensive memories of the Necrontier, now renamed Necrons for some reason, and saw that the old ones had the biggest, tastiest souls of them all, and decided that it would be a good idea to eat them. When the Catan came gnawing at the old ones front door, the old ones of course decided to punch the shit out of them with their minds, like all grandparents do. But that's when they noticed that their psychic powers were I useless against both too. them and the Necrons because they had no souls of their own. This started a massive galaxy-wide massacre of the old ones that went so far that they nearly became extinct. I guess you could say that the old ones got their life towed away from them. Ha 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 Seriously though, that's <laughs> Well, I guess the next one's take up what they want to make him a dad joke. See, mm -hmm. some of the old ones survived, and they decided that the only way to stop this imminent galactic doom is to fuck up in an equally as awful manner as the Necrontier. Thus, they created a new race, one which could fight the soulless Necrons for them. A race with strange reality bending powers fueled by crowd mentality instead of souls. A race that knew and desired only war and destruction. A race that could weaponize anything and was almost impossible to kill. A race that became known then as the Krorks, or as we know them today, the Orcs, because shortening names is a thing. What? Reskins? There's a plot twist you didn't see coming. The orcs were actually important all along. So yeah, while the Krorks were fighting the Necrons, the Eldar were shitting their collective frilly patties because they knew that they were next on the menu. So they decided to salvage as much of the old one's tech as they could and fuse it with their own. Believe it or not, the webway was actually a creation of the old ones, but the Eldar nicked off with the designs, like the thieving bastards they are. That said, by combining webway you technology stole from the and the power of the realm of souls, they created a new type of material to combat the living metal of the Necrons called Wraithbone. The Wraith constructs were sent into battle alongside the Krorks to fight back the Necrons. Turns out that while the Cat-10 were immune to psychic powers, it seemed as they could and handle being Wraithbone. From the moment I heard the name come up, I knew you'd say that. Why aren't you the smartest kid on the fucking block? Of course I am. No wonder you were bullied by your brothers. <laughs> no, that's just a... <laughs> anyway, just when things started to go down the drain for the Cat-10, things got even worse for them, as one particular asshole among them known as the Deceit, good friends with the Eldar Laughing God, brought together the most edgy Cat-10 he could possibly find, creatures with names that only the most lonely of people could come up with, such as the Nightbringer, the Void Dragon, and the Outsider. The Dessa ever then said to his fellow Celestial Gas Canisters, They. All the other Cat-10 are weak and being killed off. We should eat them before they die so their powers won't be wasted. Thus, the Cat-10 started in fighting and began to eat each other while also being destroyed by the Krorks and the Eldar because that is clearly what an intelligent life form would do. <laughs> so much destruction was caused in this, the first great war, that the Cat-10 suddenly realized they were expending more energy than they were absorbing and would run out of power if they kept this up. All according to plan, Shago Rath said as he laughed away the night with the death lever. Killing all of your allies in the middle of a giant war was apparently a bad idea, who would have fucking thought? Plus, <laughs> they simply decided to retreat back to the two worlds with their Necron armies, to wait for the universe to become plump, juicy and unprepared again. It would seem that at some point during that time, the Necrons must have regained some consciousness and taken revenge against the Catan for screwing them over. So I have been led to believe Although, to be honest, it kind of sounds like they deserved what happened to them. That's what you get for being a filthy Xeno, after all. <laughs> so with that giant clusterfuck out of the way, you'd think things would get better. But nope. This giant war had left the universe a complete fucking mess. The old ones were near extinct. The Aldar were still scared shitless and worst of all. The Krorks, with no Necrons left to fight, turned on their creators since the old ones had forgotten to install a fucking on switch. Fortunately, they could be held at bay due to having no technology of their own. That said, something worse than Necrons was on the horizon. 
You see, all the souls who were eaten, and all those who died in the battles created a major imbalance in the realm of souls. This imbalance within the outer realm corrupted and twisted it with all the ill will, fears, and general lack of common fucking decency that life now collectively experienced. Nightmarish spiritual entities started to emerge from the darkness of the realm, like a giant galactic panic attack. It was at this point that the first demons emerged, and the realm of souls was given a new name. The warp? That all makes sense. Yup. Not only did the warp up the universe, but it fucked up the outer realms of the universe too. Compared to that war, this 10,000 year old conflict that started when fucking Horos decided to be a bad boy is barely a blip on the radar. Puts things into context, doesn't it? I... suddenly feel small. And I don't know how to feel about that. You'll get used to it. <laughs> Besides, <laughs> you're shorter than most of your brothers anyhow. That's entirely <laughs> my choice and you know it. But... where were we, the humanity, during all of this? We were all busy evolving from primates into tribal cavemen, picking our noses, and fornicating in the ways that primitive beings do. But not for long. You see, warp storms caused by this huge war fucked the galaxy over. And additionally, demonic predators of the warp finished off most, if not all, of the remaining old ones. It's like some complete ass wipe suddenly invaded an old folks home, demolished all their belongings, and subjected all old people to summary executions. And then another completely unrelated group came along and did the exact same thing all over again. The Eldar, realizing their own incredible fragility, decided fuck it. Literally. And so they did. Constantly, <laughs> so they repopulated the galaxy again, became the dominant species once more, and ruined their own reproductive cycle to the point of near non-functionality. I mean, I know you lose it if you don't use it, but if you use it fucking constantly, it's gonna get worn out and shrivel up. It's at this point that the idiot says what species emerged. The what? I am absolutely hilarious, even after all these millennia. <laughs> I still don't care. So, actual humans finally started coming forth out of the care. evolutionary fuckfest at this point, and a handful of them gained psychic powers similar to that of other species carrying souls around. These early day psychers called themselves shamans, and they were totally super badass, guiding humanity by learning about the ways of nature and the universe's history through the power of the realm of souls and probably some shrooms. However, when the doddering demon douches accompanied with an entire gang of horribly unnecessary creatures like enslavers and psychnoia and started to show up, the shaman started to be horribly killed off in spasm-tasting manners. So of course, the shamans the decided they needed to put their heads together to solve the problem. So they did. Again, literally. By combining their very souls, psychic powers, knowledge, and strength through ritualistic mass suicide. They achieved in the blink of an eye something that had taken the old ones an entire species worth of evolution to do. They all became a single living being of spiritual energy and power. In short, they created me. Oh my god, that's just beautiful at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Because of course he would. <laughs> of course. Oh. I mean, Kitten is his biggest cheerleader, let's be honest. Here. He really is, and apparently his wife. <laughs> enemy by the name that I shall give them. We shall know them as... The Space Bags of Death! Look <laughs> out <laughs> my marble palace before you break your little dirty! Oh, thanks for the warning. Outrageous! Yes, we shall. <laughs> Check this out soon. Elephas! <laughs> yep. What is that now? So that was a trailer for Eliphas's uh, retelling and parody of the Behemoth story. The very first time that the Tyranids ever came into the galaxy. Ah, uh, okay. And trust me, it's going to be well worth uh, the watch because 
I, I mean, Elephus is also a contributor to to Texas Speech, so come on. <laughs> I need to no, say more than that. I actually haven't seen that one. Oh? Oh, okay. Well, no, I've never looked it up. Well then, looks like that's going to be something that we'll watch together, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll be the only one to have seen it this time. Yes. <laughs> All right. So that means don't watch it in the meantime. <laughs> Knowing you, you're probably going to rebel against that, so... Eh. <laughs> but, yes. Yeah, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to act like you're like your guardian or something, because sure, shit, I am not. Um, but yeah, that's the sum up of part one of Universal History with Professor Emperor. Any questions? Um, I think I'm good right now because, I mean, it's all just basically lore learning at this moment, so. Mm-hmm. He breaks it down in a very concise way. Well, in some of it's lore, some of it alpha and the right, and was just alpha writing at that point? Uh, it's alpha and a few others, yeah. Because there, some bits of it they made up as their own kind of canon for this mm-hmm. universe they've made. And I know one part in particular was that the Catan ate souls. Mm-hmm. Because when they first made this video, what, five, six years ago, mm-hmm. uh, people had said, no, it's not souls, it's actually something else. I don't remember what it was. And they were just kind of like, well, you know, we made our own little we're kind of unhappy about it but then fast forward to what edition nine or something and it, the katan got retconned so now they do eat souls <laughs> yeah i think we're, we're up to damn it i can't remember so... if it's eighth or ninth edition i think we're up to remember... nine <clears throat> but uh so in a sense this series actually helped write proper lore then no, I, no, it might have just been a coincidence. All I remember is because Alpha laughed and went back to those old comments, like clearly you haven't seen edition nine, where it clearly stays that just to be a ham. Well, oh, okay. So to to kind of address that assumption, um, a lot of the information that they were pulling from were basically from original sources from fifth edition in particular, because fifth edition, I believe, well. More specifically, the Necron Codex, which majority of, of the of this was dedicated to, to the Necrons because they were there since that far back, uh, they were introduced in 5th edition and part of their lore was surrounding the War in Heaven to kind of explain their existence. So what happened was basically between 5th edition all the way up till now, a lot has changed in between to kind of fill in the gaps of the galactic history. Um, so it's basically perceived that a lot of the information was speculative, speculative or knowledge that was known at the time. And then when you factor in the fact that this video was, was published six years ago and made a little bit earlier than that, all the way back in 2015, 2014, around that range too, that's, <clears throat> that's a, a lot of time for a lot of information to just start suddenly coming in to explain away the Necrons. So this uh, is the point where in TTS specifically that this is the jumping off point where they're following their own canon because they're based off of what little information they had, firstly, and the gaps and the logical filling of the gaps in between to kind of explain how the galaxy got to where it is now. So for the purposes of uh, TTS's okay. lore... Everything that the Emperor said, yeah, that's true. And then they'll probably throw in one or two details of like, well, you, your species didn't know. I was like, yeah, that's right. He didn't know because he, you know, was too busy doing his own thing. You know? Yeah. So it gives them uh, flexibility and wiggle room to work with the canon. But effectively from this episode going forward, TTS is considered its own canon. And it's only going to reference as much of the new canon uh, or the, the retroactive uh, retconning as needed to make it close but still it's you know separate continuity uh, okay yeah because in future episodes we're going to see uh characters that get introduced in recent books so you know th- 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 there's 
going to be gaps in between that they're going to fill because of it's being the the current year but a lot of the histories are basically being changed as we go forward so that addresses that um any other comments or i can't think of anything okay i think i'm good all right so let's go ahead and jump in onto the deep dive portion of the video because who doesn't like a good old Lord Dumpy? Let's dive back into the pool. <laughs> okay, first thing I'm going to point out. This was a very fast panning shot, so you, so it's very hard to see everything that's in the background since most of the attention is going to be on Magnus and Kitten walking in on screen. But do you guys see what's in the background? There's the Sphinx and a part of the Louvre. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a library that I want to live in. Well, if my assumption is correct, because I've been trying to cross-reference it with a lot of um, photos, that may very well be the Library of Luxembourg. For all for all I know, but... Library of Luxembourg? Yeah, or L Luxembourg Palace, or the li Library within Luxembourg Palace. Uh, I forget which it is. Um, but yeah, the, the assumption is that Maxis is filled, uh, in a room filled with the accumulation of knowledge of human history on Earth. So, <clears throat> it's Which it's frankly sounds of amazing. Of course you would find that amazing of him. <laughs> oh, and Hey, to... hey, knowledge is amazing, okay? <clears throat> well, as being the person who is more knowledgeable about the lore out of the three of us, I guess that does make me amazing by default. I said knowledge is amazing, not necessarily those who wield it. Well, I was also going to say, George, in regards to her wanting to live in something like that, we've all seen her room on the... So... Can you please say the name of our ship, right? I honestly forgot what the fuck the name of the ship was. It's been a while since we've been outside. Of course you did. I used to want to know I'm being fucking serious. It's been so long since we've talked about it. Oh, goodness. Well, the... Bless you. You censored it again, didn't you? The honks are real. The honks are real. <laughs> You did it earlier today, too, when I just did the acronym. Hmm? Did you also sense her earlier when I did the acronym? We don't want to drop too many hints. Did, did you censor my <laughs> joke? Kind of had to. You suck. I just meant, did you censor my <laughs> joke? <laughs> well, yes. Yes, you did. Listen. <laughs> One day, there's a level of control that I was taught by the Inquisition to maintain at all times. Well, anyway, that's so. not the Luxembourg Palace Library, by the way. Oh, it's not. What is it? I don't know, but it's not the Luxembourg Palace Library. I wish I knew, cause I want to go live there, but. Well, of course you would know which one would be the library in this case. Alright, so moving on. Um, going on forward from here. We have... It might didgeridoo! Yeah, the didgeridoo. Um, <laughs> I get a kick out of that. Yeah, so there's a reason for the didgeridoo. Um, James, I, I don't know if you kind of caught it, but uh, the voice actor for for Magnus. What does his uh, accent remind you of? I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm gonna wind up guessing Australian. Yeah. So it became accidentally. A, yeah, it's an accidental Australian accent because while they were trying to get uh, Zegram to uh, do a certain accent, he just couldn't do it. He kept sounding Australian, so it became a joke. So when they basically uh, made this scene, the didgeridoo is there as a sort of a, a backhanded poke and prod from them on him. Uh, Which is hilarious to me that they included that little Easter egg. Oh, yeah. 
But if you're making a show, you might as well have some self-referential stuff to, you know, be entertained by. Okay. As well. These three. Um, <laughs> so, from what I could tell, and I actually did try my best to look them up, um, these are actual demon mini miniature figures that belong to Zinch. But the only oh. one I could get an actual name for would actually be this one that has the beak and what looks like to be an Australian <laughs> Outback hat. And this guy is called a, a uh, Pink Horror. So, yeah. Interesting. Is a pink The horror? middle one um, with the flower hat? And the mouse. That looks like a goose head. Yeah. It's, it's very hard not to see the avian features that is pretty much reminiscent of Zinch. <clears throat> he does like the birds. That he does. So, yeah, we got the pink horrors in here. Uh, oh, so... I'm going to jump ahead because a lot of this is basically self-explanatory, but I did love the comment that Magnus made. Uh, no, not not the berating of Kitten because that was funny. Um, yes, and to be fair, the Necrons and your Thousand Sons do have pretty similar motifs nowadays. So I'm going to throw, throw this out there because I have run across an explanation on Reddit before that basically Necrons were on their way, uh, basically going to different planets to actually expand their empire, and then eventually they started consuming many planets. There's a hint that basically the Necrons had touched down on Earth, and there may have been a crossover of cultural uh, adaptation that the humans had towards the Necrons, hence the why the Egyptian motif. But then the hmm. Emperor basically charged in, chased them off, but the cultural motif will basically stuck. And this basically left uh, the Egyptians to go forward. Then when Prospero was uh, organized, they took the Egyptian uh, flair with them. And when the Thousand Sons were organized, when they moved from Terra to, to Prospero and started serving directly under Magnus the Red, they adopted the Prosperan uh, culture. So, indirectly, uh, it's sort of like a weird uh, joke for the Necrons to be getting a cease and desist order, considering that they were the ones who probably <laughs> influenced them in the first place in a more roundabout way. Okay, so that's fair enough. Yeah, Kind of so. like really weird convergent evolution. Yeah, something like that, but more for the cultural scale instead of like direct evolution <laughs> now uh kitten does make a comment about uh slaying the occasional demon in um in the palace that unfortunately is referencing that the golden throne may be failing where basically the seal and the gap uh, on top of the the warp on earth is basically starting or that the warp ter on Terra is basically starting to fail. So basically some demons will basically uh, be unleashed in the palace and the custodians have to basically crack down and kill them. Which probably does lead credence to why they never left Terra in the first place because they just can't afford to. Hmm. That's a better reason than we can't leave him. Well... I mean, they still do send, you know, on very, very, very rare occasions, like the odd squad that goes out, but they never move as a giant force for anything. Um, okay. Let's see, let's see. Oh, and he does say that he never really uh, asked because he was always more interested in matters of the Immaterium and superhero comics with regards to the origins of humanity. It's kind of weird that he basically goes on a full-on sentence saying that with all of the the demon tomes and the screaming faces and the beware signs would basically make a mundane book about their human creation would look unappealing in comparison. It's such a self-own in that case where basically Magnus is on purpose chasing after the occult and dangerous knowledge. Well, and it's 
Okay, if you give a kid one book with, just as a kid, a book with no cover, and a book that has a cover of dinosaurs on it, which one do you think he's going to go for? The one that looks cool and interesting. Mm. Well, as a father, I can 100% say that is absolutely certain. Yeah. You're going to look for what's interesting, not for, I don't know, like, interesting for some people, the composition of dust to the molecular level mm -hmm. versus an actual paleontology or yeah, just the study of more. There's, there's topics that fascinate people and there's topics that don't fascinate people. Yeah. I guess that is fair, but I also like to basically throw out that instead of leading his thousand sons, even after being absorbed into the Imaterium, he does only get, interested in the immaterium itself and the games and plans of the gods rather than actually leading the thousand sons that he saved in the first place he kind of unfortunately though he lost the ability to really care about them yeah but it's nice that he's actually admitting so much yeah uh let's see let's side see. note uh i do know what that library is oh you do Mm -hmm. It's the Abbey Library of St. Gall in Switzerland. Okay. Too bad. That's it was a ceiling in the buttresses. Ah, that would explain it. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then there's the portion where the lovely Centurion shows up on screen when basically Kitten was saying that he doesn't want to ask because he doesn't want uh, the Emperor's head to pop off like a, and roll off like a bowling pin. Yeah, that, that's basically just him being, you know, someone who is really, really protective of the Emperor, so suggesting as such would garner his attention. Just, no. Just don't. I protect the Emperor. And the comment where he says, I'm rarely wrong. I'm sorry, I couldn't help but laugh while I was doing my my uh, research on that. Sorry, Magnus, but <laughs> I'm rarely wrong. <laughs> well, darling, you you are and you aren't. But as you've admitted, pride in spades. Just like his father. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. So let's also talk about the old ones that were introduced. Um, so basically the old ones and their design. Uh, if you guys have noticed that they actually do look like toad men. Um, the funny thing is, that's actually a race that exists in Warhammer Fantasy. So they incorporated that into Warhammer 40,000, where basically it is a sect of the Lizardmen called the Slan. So in other words, Toadmen that basically preside as the ruling class over the Lizardmen. Wait, how do you pronounce that? Slan? S-L-A-A-N is Nancy. Slan. Oh, sorry. That's too close it's, to Slanesh for my liking. It's, it's two N's, not two A's. I'm sorry. Apparently my ends look like A's in a certain angle. So yeah, basically it's uh, the creators have introduced, you know, elements of Warhammer Fantasy even more so into 40k than was initially uh, uh, noticed by me in this case. And it's funny that in Warhammer Fantasy they refer to the lizard men as the cold ones, but in 40k they're referred to as the old ones. I don't know where like they find that as a fun play of words, or it's just really, really uninspired. You were saying, Chelsea? I like the popsicle art better. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked up what I looked up what they look like, and that's 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 something. Let's see. Okay, well, while you're looking that up, George, um, my question is this: is I'm just trying to figure out exactly where everything kind of falls in line. You saying that they were trying to bring that stuff in and all that. So is like Warhammer and like Warhammer 30,000 and Warhammer 40,000 like completely and totally fucking separate from each other? Uh, in terms of universes, yes, they are completely and totally separate from one another. The only thing that binds them together realistically is the chaos faction so basically the chaos gods are actually the same in this case 
but instead of being out in uh, the middle of space and galactic conquest, it's essentially taking place on a fantasy world where different races are, you know, constantly vying for power over um, over the continent that they reside on. So this is basically like the multiverse then. Sort of, yeah. And it's also kind of funny because, as it's been pointed out, that if you end up buying a Chaos unit, like specifically the Chaos Demons unit, you can technically transfer them over to Warhammer Fantasy just as easily because the models are close, if not completely similar. Huh. You just can't use the Chaos Space Marines because those are exclusive to 40k. Oh, yeah, watch me. <laughs> you know, seeing you play a game would be interesting. Because you'd have to paint all the models. Hmm. It would also require me to have time. Also people in the area who play. Yep. Let's see. Uh, Quarks? Yeah, Quarks. So basically the formation of the Orcs when they were first introduced, uh, they were effectively the old one's uh, version of the Space Marines when they were brought in against the Necron tier. Space oh. Marines or Thunder Warriors? I would say Space Marines because in uh, the lore they're actually referred to as very competent leaders and generals that actually use strategy instead of just throw as many bodies against the wall and see what sticks. Okay. But what happened was as you know, the war in heaven basically came to a close... They had nothing to fight, and then they started fighting in with each other, and then their entire culture completely collapsed on itself, and they just became knuckle-dragging fighters. Well, that's just sad. Yeah. It actually kind of is. And funny enough, uh, the Necron... Uh, uh, the Necron... The, hey. the Necron version of the Collector in Warhammer 40k, he actually has a still-living cr uh, still Krork in full armor, too. So all the way back from the war in heaven in his collection. Oh, I remember him. I was trying to think. I'm like, Collector, what are you? Oh, I remember. No, I remember who he is. Mm -hmm. He has the. Oh, no. He's the. Doesn't he have. He has my boy. He has the sad boy, doesn't he? Yeah, he has the clone of Fulgrim in his possession. Oh, yep. sweetie. That makes. That breaks my heart. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Let's also get back to this prick. Okay, so this Catan God specifically. Uh, when I did research on him, the name that came back was Mephetran, uh, or commonly known as the Deceiver. So out of all the Catan, he was basically the weakest of the Catan. And his entire thing was basically to try to mediate the wants and needs of the Necrons to the Catan, specifically, or at least that's what their hope was. But really, he was just a huge manipulator, and he manipulated the Necrons to go into the War of Heaven in the first place. He was also the one that basically had all of the Necrons start fighting in on each other, like the Emperor explained, to the point that basically they just completely fell apart. Well, in the revamp of the Necron story... Instead of just going dormant with all of the other Necrons, he was actually uh, broken apart by the Necrons themselves when they rose up against the Catan. So they did that to all of them, all of the Catan, uh, and basically the Deceiver was broken up into shards and the shards went throughout the entire galaxy. Now, what makes the Deceiver so dangerous is that even in just shard form, he basically can manipulate anyone and anything to the point that he's actually been credited to provoking the Gothic Sector War, specifically to destroy the Blackstone Fortresses. Now, I've alluded to what they were when I was talking about the 13th Black Crusade, when Abaddon came from the Eye of Terror with all of Chaos Marines and attacked Cadia, and they were destroying the, 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 the Necron pylons that held the Eye of Terror back, you know, from spreading throughout the known galaxy. One of the things that he did and how he manipulated, I don't really know, but he basically was able to manipulate Abaddon the Spoiler to crash the fortress into the planet, destroying the fortress, destroying the planet, and destroying the Necron Pylons, spreading the Eye of Terror further so that way chaos can spread more into the uh, realm. 
and the Blackstone Fortresses are credited to be the only weapons that can actually kill a Catan. So he's, well, re- so he's responsible for that, and he's even credited for fooling the Alpha Legion, or at least a war band of theirs, into thinking that he was uh, their Primarch, Omegon, and led them to uh, many, many campaigns, and I think specifically in the in the Black Crusade. But a leader in the Alpha Legion, I don't remember his name because I, I forgot to write it down, he was able to seal the Shard of the Deceiver, and he intends to fully uh, interrogate the Deceiver to know everything that he knows in the wider known galaxy and understand the manipulations and the machinations that he's setting forward throughout the galaxy. So the Deceiver, even when broken apart, he's an extremely dangerous indiv- individual in the 40k universe. So, yeah. Well, that's terrifying. Yep. And he's besties with Chegara, the laughing god of the Eldar. So, yeah, that's that's already something to be concerned about because he controls an entire faction of Eldar called the Harlequins. So, if you just think elves with clown makeup and very, very deadly Joker-esque uh, moods, you pretty much got well, isn't down specifically to the Drakari, too? No, actually. He does not... Uh, what? Yeah, he does not uh, influence the Drukari because the Drukari don't support him. The Drukari are, are, are separate. The they're, Harlequins were Drukari. They're not. No. Oh no. Yeah, it's basically a third faction. Well, tech. I want to say technically fifth faction of Eldar, because we got the the Eldar as we know for for the craft worlds. So they're the ones that are basically in space stations or planetoid space stations that are flying through the galaxy trying to survive. You have the uh, Exodites. I think Exodites? Oh, I might be thinking of something else. But basically they're Eldar that went back to their roots in the fo- in the farthest reaches of Eldar space to colonize those and break away from the old ways of the Eldar. You have the Harlequins. And then you have the Drukhari, the Dark Eldar that we know, and they're the ones that basically indulge in suffering of others, and they torture people so that way Slanesh leaves them alone and feeds off of the suffering of others, thus extending their lives. And then the fifth one is actually the newest one, but that one is led by Ivrain, and their entire thing is basically to revive the god of death, uh, well, the Eldar god of death, to try to create a deity strong enough to kill Slanesh once and for all. I'm down for that, because she can also bring back my boys. Eh, <laughs> we'll see how, how that plays out. So she can, not necessarily she will, but she can. Done it before. Mm. Through the power of Inia. Those poor babies. So. And... Ba-ba-ba-ba. The only other thing worth pointing out would basically be the sensor face. That is a face of a um, of a character from Dawn of War, so one of the one of the Blood Ravens specifically. Uh, so that's that's why his face is there. They basically superimposed it there, and it is uh, self reference to that. In case you were wondering. So yeah, that's uh, the end of the lore dump for episode sixteen. Any other questions come to mind? No, I think I'm good at this point. All right, cool. Then with that, uh, we can go forward in three, two. <laughs> you see kitten shrink back down. Yet? Almost. Just a second. Sigh. <laughs> you know how often sigh has made it into my basic language anymore? <laughs> Just sigh. <laughs> that didn't work. It's just like sigh. <laughs> Greater than colon hyphen left parenthesis. Snails evolve legs faster than <laughs> loafers get over this shit. Okay. I think it's mostly out of my system, man. I was actually confused. 
For the first time in as long as I can remember. The last time you were confused, you started to fucking fall. I, I did not. Confusion just makes my eyes water is all. Don't you start making excuses, you little crybaby you. I'm gonna <laughs> use your boy as a xylophone. Go ahead, mop hair. <laughs> you oh, have to shut your keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> why did you not tell anyone of this before? Because you never fucking asked, that's why. Besides, what was written down was apparently censored by those charming fuck nuggets in the Inquisition. That's just fantastic. I'll take my chance and ask a million questions now then. You ready? You get to ask one before I continue. Why does my pure flawless father have some sordid detail to hide? No. It's yes. Because if I had to field every question your nerd brain could devise, we'd be here for another 40,000 years. Do I get to ask a question, my lord? No, go away! <coughs> okay, Chelsea, I, I can see exactly the why he's here. Go ahead then, Hornticks. Oh yeah, no, it's... Are you it's, uh... Technically still there's human. a reason. Are space marines, custodies, and you primarchs still a human? Same answer. No and yes. I am human in the sense that I was born of, and am the product of, humans. My soul is innately human. However, I am not a mere man. I am what humanity could achieve if we evolved, as the old ones did. The shamans who created me just took a shortcut, similar to how I took a few shortcuts when creating you guys. We are basically various stages of accelerated human evolution. Humans, space marines, custodies, prime arcs, and then myself. Huh. Do you mind enlightening us further with this grand universal story, my lord? Of course. About the year after the whole mega evolution by suicide thing, I was born to regular human parents. The shamans that killed themselves <laughs> baby. combined to become one giant soul and entered my mother while she was still pregnant. This was 50,000 years ago. During my first years of life, I was a powerful but reckless young man. At that point in time, most of my life consisted of crushing my enemies and driving them before me and hearing the lamentation of the woman. I was honestly kind of an asshole, a handsome, muscle-bound asshole. However, as time went by, I felt that more of my past lives impose upon me, revealing who I truly was. Ancient wisdom, immense power, and a strong sense of right filled my body Sit to down, the <laughs> I was no longer who I used to be. I was now a handsome, muscle-bound god like being who could use magic. I was the greatest thing since myself before the transformation. After this incredible power boost, I started roaming around Terra, or Earth, as it was called at the time, like a ghost. I watched from the shadows as mankind grew, waiting, influencing, and sometimes scaring small children. Fast forward a couple of millennia. It was the year M25, of course you'd laugh at and that. the age of strife had come. Don't judge Humans me. had spread all across the galaxy, and all was fine and dandy. But suddenly, as if some idiot repeatedly ran his head against on the ship's storm button, a whole cockload of psychers suddenly emerged on what? every single world. As you well know, psychers use the warp to do magic and shit, but untrained psychers are pretty bad at it and usually attract warp predators when doing so. <laughs> First it seemed fine. A lot of people's initial reaction was, hey, wizards are real. Neat. But then bam, demons That's all honestly what I could see happening if magic giant. came up to be real. The only planets yeah. that survived this fate were those that performed witch hunts Stop. and brutally Stop. murdered psychers wherever they popped up. You can imagine how popular murder cult religions were at the time. To serve as the puss icing on this rock cake, warp storms started bucking up the galaxy immensely again. As mankind depended on the warp to make it from planet to planet, every human colony was isolated from one another, as going through the warp during a warp storm is incredibly stupid. This was especially awful in Terra's case, as Terra depended on other planets for its groceries and toilet paper. This uh, left the people of hey, Terra in like a the... severe state of famine and itchy ass clefts. Terra soon became not, but a blasted desert, a shadow of its former self. Here, a bunch of cartoon villains called Techno Barbarians roamed free and fought one another for territory. As Terra so it became was Mad Max. Up beyond it all became Australia, yes. I decided to finally reveal <laughs> myself to mankind, since screaming at it from the sidelines clearly didn't fucking work. So I picked up some hardy boys, augmented them massively, and gave them the name Thunder Warriors, the greatest warriors on Terra. I was just about to say that George got out of my head. I don't know what that means. Successors to the Space Marines. Suffice it to say, the day was safe because I'm just that good. 
Alright, so now I've heard all about your biography. But what happened to the rest of the universe between now and then? If you really want to hear the boring parts, fine. To make a long story slightly less long. While Earth was in its infancy, and I was protecting it from all the serial killers outside. The uh, Eldar fucked up. Again. Literally. And yes, I will reuse this joke as often as I like, because I'm the motherfucking Emperor, and I'm allowed <laughs> to do that. I'm hilarious. This was the point well. in time in which the Eldar managed to murder fuck the chaos god slanish into existence, which was the final coffin, to hit the nail into the hammer for any sense the realm of souls once had. From that point on, it was a technicolor house cape of sexual humans, and murder fuck slanish, slanish managed to yep. agitate the other chaos gods into going full fuck force as they hadn't done anything worth noting since the medieval ages when they were born. This started an instant mass production of demon hookers and punch me monsters. This incredibly violent space birth even managed to rupture the galaxy's privates, which created the gaping, expansive warp hole in the center of the galaxy that is nowadays known as the Eye of Terror, because the dick demons clearly needed a bigger hole to poke into. <laughs> this <laughs> oh, gosh. And the Eye of Terror was formed, most every Eldar in the galaxy died as a result of this galactical miscarriage. The only ones lucky enough to survive were those far away from the Eldar homeworlds. In addition, Slanish also did to the Eldar what the Ktan did to the Necrontier, making it so Slanish automatically receives all Eldar's souls upon their death, unless they use protection. This totally proves that I'm the only god, like entity in the universe, that didn't fuck things up for its own people. Not that you want to say that again? Me a god or anything. Mm, right. I'm just saying. And we are infinitely thankful for that, my lord. No. You better damn well be. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> we'll have this argument later. A small upturn here. The good news was that since the galaxy was finally out of its bipolar pregnancy stage, the Eye of Terror blew away all the warp storms that had fucked up the galaxy, making space travel possible again. Thus, with the Eldar out of the way, the universe pretty much empty of all worthy life and the Age of Strife over. I took humanity, and decided it was time to conquer the stars, reuniting the human planets that had been isolated and lost during the Age of Strife with the newly formed Imperium of Man. And it went well at first, everyone was holly jolly and loved me. I began preparing for the Great Crusade, and everyone had a good time. At this point, I also made the Prime Arcs, my very own children, that would help me lead mankind to total galactic domination. But then, those giant material ball sacks known as the Chaos God scattered all across the galaxy, shitting and giggling as they went. So with that, I had to go out and relocate all my sons once more, which <laughs> was a pain in the side. <laughs> After I had done that, however, and the Great Crusade was at full go, everyone was happy again, except the one or two hundred planets we annihilated. But as you know, fucking Horus's massive temper tantrum happened right after that. The rebellion happened, I was put on this throne. Most of my sons either disappeared or died. The entire Imperium shat its united long johns. That stupid age of apostasy happened, and those fucking Tyranids apparently showed up. Oh, and those Tau creatures too, if that is worth mentioning. It's not! And so <laughs> in the room, the Eldar mostly split into two it's factions, not one which wants their species to become great again, as if that will ever happen, and one which simply doesn't care about anything other than being disturbed by <gasps> sweat goblins. And that's the how and why of humanity, the galaxy, and the gloomy fuckfest we're all invited to. You get all of that? Um, sure, but you did seem to skim over a lot of stuff near the end. Yes. For instance, all that stuff about the Dark Age of Technology. Like, what's the Man of Iron you mentioned him earlier? And what happened to the few surviving old ones? And what about those sensitive people that I just remembered that was in? While I enjoy filling your brain barrels with crap, I now have a massive super headache. I need to take a break. I guess the book could be published in two volumes for double the profit. I'll tell you about the Dark Age of Technology and other stuff like that later. Also, what the flying fuck is a sensei? You know, your human descendants? You mean the descendants of the families of the shamans I about this who gave their lives to form me? Isn't that like all of humanity? Not exactly what I meant. Good, I never liked Uncle Ragnar anyway. <laughs> but really though, what in the fuck do you mean? Phew, you, you, you are... You aren't saying some of my human partners actually survive having intercourse with me? 
and moreover, gave birth to actual children. The fact that the Sensei are incredibly powerful psychers with changed ring like abilities, much like small versions of your spell, seems to indicate this. They also share a very sharp jawline. Well, shit. Come to think of it, this is actually the first kind of sort of pleasant surprise I've had since meeting my Centurion and hearing of the Oh, just wait for the I have surviving heirs as well as my prey marks. I mean, I only made you guys because I didn't think that reproduction for me would be possible any other way. That's nice to know. But seriously, as far as I knew, none of the people I'd introduced to Big E had been able to handle it, and most of them had pretty <laughs> explosive climaxes. I hate Again, this I hate conversation. <laughs> I didn't need to tell you that. This is the kind of knowledge that should remain a mystery. Come to think of it, I never thought to check back on any of them after the first night. Now I genuinely feel kind of bad. That's a first. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was just mutual fun, and they were willingly getting into it. And I didn't leave any of them unsatisfied, nor was I going out of my way to be a jerk about the whole thing. It's just, you know, me being who I am. Maybe I was a bit too rough. And seriously, I didn't knowingly leave them to their fate. I just figured that with all those broken bones and all that blood and la, 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 I can't hear this. I don't want to be on this bed anymore. <laughs> Sorry, bucket on I'm kitten's head. Away. <laughs> Sigh. It was my favorite bone. I sure do miss it. I'm just glad that uh, uh, I'm just glad that I have no such urges or interests at all. My only desire is to serve you, my lord. That can easily be skewed in all the wrong ways. It's a good thing that shitty fanfic writers aren't anywhere near here. Don't jinx it, father. So, back to the new topic at hand. I presume these sensei people are basically... Oh, I've seen some weird fanfics. ...by new plebeians. Yeah. Either way, that, that, I want that. you to send someone to go out and find them for me. And oh god, please tell me we're not doing that. No, no we're not. Oh, thank god. I don't want to relive the mayonnaise um, thing. You're going to tell me something that will make me pop a planet, aren't you? The Inquisition has been hunting them down and killing them. Do I want to know about the mayonnaise thing? thing? No. Imperial cannon. no, no, you do not. The rest can be banished with no okay. explanation before the Inquisitors can get to The internet decided to make a pairing. Somebody with mayonnaise. I'm not kidding. And it got weird. Uh oh. We should go. Biggie. I should go. I better go. I managed. <laughs> well, I found them. <laughs> I committed <laughs> I, I never got job. that before. <laughs> 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 what is Sweet, I'm growing to the side of baloney, warm storms. The planet reports that it'd be a beautifully smoggy day. Inquisitors, the time has come. We, the eternal watches of mankind, have come to lay I 100% forgot he was still alive. <laughs> that have infected and corrupted the very core of our Imperium. We are here to eat the uh, core of our Empire. For your PC. We are George here actually wanted it here to play the show with his visitor this. stuff on it, but I was nice to talk about it. Yeah, no. In that case, he would get some very interesting gifts in the mail. Exist, <laughs> but we shall never give up. Our faith in the Emperor who break through Lovely any Lovely combination of catnip and glitter. Go! Charge! And edible confetti. Well, the flower confetti. What the fuck, y'all? <laughs> One invasion later. Where is everybody? Why is no one attempting to stop our righteous crusade through Eternity Gate? Oh, maybe they went on a business trip together. That's what my parents did. They're my second parent. And all my friends. And my dog. Ugh. Oh my well, I presume they'll expect us to enter into the Imperial Palace. When we do, I foresee they'll attack us with all they have. Soldiers, make ready! When we step through these once sacred doors, we'll be greeted with a vanguard of traitors like no other. Thank you, Happy Kendry. Decius, <laughs> 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 I am not sure what an Energlet's bloated ball sack you are doing, <sighs> but may I suggest that you actually fight back 
when someone well, is invading the Imperial yeah, Palace. What in the Emperor's name are you doing here? So early in the morning, Olas. Are you really so dumb that you're going to come back here and force your way into the throne room? Well, I cannot say it's been very hard so far. Where did the mighty bulwark of the palace go? Actually, has it ever even existed? Yes, of course it has. We've just retired it because, well, the Emperor wanted us to. The Emperor has not ordered a thing. It is all the work of the Adeptus Custodes, attempting to ruin the Imperium from inside out. Shut your borscht tall and get out of here before I do something. And what would that be? <laughs> Are you going to pierce us with your phallic cranium? I'll, uh, I'll call on my ministry to dispatch you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you underestimate us, Feodor. Oh, what are you going to do? Sight passages out of a book at us? <laughs> Ow! Oh, come on, this is really happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's happening. Damn it! Tuck the chicken sink at you. Activate Rosarii, the Emperor protects. Force fields, yep. Test my patience, a crazy arc. Soldiers, throw your grenades. It's actually The crazy arcs are still standing. There shouldn't be anything left. This is impossible. Impossible. Impossible is not part of the Inquisition vocabulary, my friend. Who said that? What is that? You're more than courtiers. Tokumada. I did not expect such a guest of honor was going to enlighten us with his impressions. The pleasure is all mine. Could you possibly enlighten me to the situation that is at hand? We cannot get to this blasted line of Rosarius. We need to so we can get to the Emperor and save him for the traitorous custodies that have taken him hostage. Order your men that to line stop of thought is so stupid, I will show but I you can definitely personal army bearer. Definitely see idiots Operator, it is time. thinking it. Do the, how you say, funky monkey. We are driving them back. Christ forward. Throw more things. Send these motherless bastards crawling back to their holes for the emperor. Hey, uh, found a barrel. I haven't ever seen a barrel in the Imperial Palace before. Oh, uh, what's in it? I don't know. Hey, that's um. I guess we found the nostalgia, I think. This Aurora's has a secret vibrator stash. Oh, At long last! Yeah. <laughs> Not my arms! Mom? Dad? Is it really you? Monkeys? <laughs> really? That's the great secret of Courtier's Tokumov? Yes, what about them? I am, well, to say the least, unimpressed. Actually, I'd go far to say I think I just lost all my respect for you. Why don't you step off that over-glorified portopata you call a throne of judgment and say that to my face? Or are you going to have your deep friar kill me for doing your job better than you? Oh no, I would not want to rid you on the off chance to die on the old folks' planet where you belong. <laughs> I have to take my leave now, as I have a movie to shoot. Try not to kill the Emperor for being innocent or whatever it is you could possibly accuse him of, su loco puta. They've broken through. <laughs> the Inquisition is on their way into what the What is he? Oh, I was going to pause ask him, like, what did he say? What? They can't do that! That's illegal! You need to call on your soldiers. They're going to make it to the Emperor. Well, I'm not too sure about doing stuff that the Emperor told us not to do. Hmm. I mean, this is the first actual order we've gotten in, um, ever. Maybe we should actually abide by it for once. I barely remember what you do when you follow an order. This is so exciting. But they are going into the Emperor's throne room. Don't you understand, you fools? Wait. Hold on a moment. Just had an idea. What if we threw this boot at Decius's head? What? Why, that's the most splendid idea I've ever heard. Let to shoot the boot, make the topper go boot. What are you despicable old sacks talking about? <laughs> <laughs> hey, now he doesn't have to stress out over stupid shit anymore. Oh, I look at him, sleeping there like a billy goat with a head on. Now, oh, stop breathing, Gates. It's getting really hot and full of carbon dioxide in here. Uh, 
We have made it. <laughs> we made it. Now, soldiers, behind these doors await the most hefty and Herculean enemies that we shall ever face. You must all prepare yourselves for the most grueling, frightful, but glorious battle to ever take. Ever take Come on, Skeldor, you already held like two speeches about preparing ourselves, and both of the times <sighs> nothing actually happened. Be quiet, Dominique! Yeah, that's like, fine, we'll just open the door, you whining bunch of. Show is good. Keeps it, going it was back. nostalgia. Oh, it was. Mhm. Mm nice. That was nostalgia. She did, wait. What was that? What did you say? Did that say something about vegans? Nostalgia uh, does voices for some of the characters in TTS. Oh, okay. So it was just, I recognized the voice. What the? Stringstorm for the audio, white for the subtitles. Thank you for saving me from that horrid purgatory. That was soul crushing and made me hate Vegas all over again. 10 out of 10 would do again. <laughs> what? Stringstorm was the one who did the audio editing for this episode. Ah. And basically he said that was soul crushing and made me hate Sony Vegas all over again. The, the program he was using. Oh, I see. Okay. So glad I never got that one. Let's see. And let's see. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Proofreading by Nostalgia Chen. Thunder Psyker as Custodes. Zigram as Magnus. Uh, nope. Oh, hold on. Damn it. What was it? What was it? What was it? Nostalgia Chan as the murdered priests. The ones that got killed by the monkeys in the barrel. Uh. uh yeah. I forgot to hit the button, so I was talking and you couldn't hear me. Hmm. And Nostalgia Chan for making all the glorious cutout art once again. Gods and kings for the art of Torquemada Cortez and the Jokero. Elephus for editing several scenes in this video again, and Stringstorm for the audio. Everyone who was patient enough to not unsubscribe. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so. That was episode 17, Emperor's Excellent Autobiography. So, any questions? Um, nothing comes to mind right away. Mm -hmm. James? I think I'm good on questions about what was discussed. Mm. Although my question is now, what are we going to do the next set of TTS? Because I want to know what happens. Uh, we're going to be doing that soon, but I'm also kind of interested in doing Behemoth soon, too. So we're going to have to argue and debate about which one we're going to do next. Uh, fair. Okay. Well, if that answers... Well, <laughs> if there was anything to answer, I guess I'm good for the uh, lore dive here. So... Lore dive! Let's see. Uh, right, so remember how well, I... I completely ignored that. I, I didn't even hear you. What? Oh, never mind then. No, no, no. What'd you say? <laughs> no, I said lore dump. Oh. Really? It works. And I think someone's going to appreciate no. it as an Easter egg. Listen, I'm tired. <laughs> My material is really... really dry. Hmm? Okay. 
So, going into it. So, the part where basically the Emperor mentioned the protection from the outside, that basically showed a, a picture of, what was it, the Necron and the uh, Orcs as well. So, I don't know about the Orcs in particular, but at least this did make a, a reference to Necrons being an outside threat. Um, let's see. Uh, yes, Age of the Gods. So going into that. So when Slanesh was murder, murder boned into existence, uh, what the Emps basically said that basically Slanesh managed to agitate the other Chaos Gods into being, um, essentially the gods actually have an order of higher, well, have a semi order to when they were created. Where basically Nurgle was first, Zinch was second, and Korn was the third one to come around. And I believe specifically Korn came around during the uh, medieval ages where basically the bloodshed was at its uh, peak for humanity at that point. Slanesh's existence uh, basically was created so violently that basically it sent ripples throughout not just the the warp but also reality itself causing the tear to form in the first place and that's what caused Nurgle, Zinch, and Korn to basically go full sentient and started amassing hordes to start taking over the warp and start a war with themselves and okay yeah so basically that's how that got kicked off but in the process of the Eye of Terror being formed all previous warp storms that made passage between uh, planets impossible basically cleared up as a result of that. So there was a slight benefit for that to come into existence. So they accidentally ended Long Night? Yeah. Yeah, in a roundabout way. Interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Oh, the mention of protection. Uh, so basically, as each Eldar dies... Uh, Slanesh basically gets to consume their souls in the process, and in the process of consuming their soul, uh, Eldar basically just don't have anything to actually stop, you know, their soul from being consumed if it were to ever go into the warp, as all souls do once a creature or a creature with soul actually dies. So what they do instead is basically create spirit stones, and they incorporate it onto their armor and clothes. So that way, in the event that they actually do die, their souls get captured into one of these stones. And they'll put plenty of these stones on themselves to try to guarantee that their soul is sealed and not consumed by Slanesh in the process. And what they do with the stones is basically, on craft worlds, they'll inter it so that way it becomes part of the collective consciousness of the craft world. So it's sort of like a miniature afterlife for them in a roundabout way. Or they'll take some of these uh, soul stones and incorporate them into the Wraithbone constructs, which in this case is the Eldar's version of Titans. If you guys remember those huge hulking giant automaton. Yeah. So they actually have their own version of that, and it's run off of soul stones. So there is that. Uh, okay. Oh, so the subject of the sensei, the people born of the emperor, the the ones that were created through natural means instead of being created by the Thunder Warriors or Primarchs or Space Marines. So, essentially, um, the reason why the emperor doesn't know of their existence up until this moment, it's explained that because of the fact that they are uh, descendants of the emperor, they basically have really, really powerful traits of his. But the one thing that makes them interesting is the fact that they're born as blanks. So in other words, they don't... Uh, they're imperceptible to other psychers. So the Emperor, being a psyker himself, he can't become aware of them unless they actually reveal themselves. Oh. And since, and since most of them basically just live normal lives or they basically go on to become heroes or, you know, and most of them tend to be mortal, basically the Emperor never noticed that they existed in the first place. Oh. Now, they're born as blanks and they, they basically do uh, go off and live their own lives. Some of them, very few, are born powerful 
psychers onto themselves but die out, or they're born immortal and don't know it. And basically because of the fact that they're born immortal, they don't want everyone to know about it, so they just keep it to themselves. Hence why Imps doesn't know about them that way, too. But more Being immortal than, would suck. Well, especially in the Warhammer 40k universe, I would have to agree. Yeah. But what's funny is the fact that in many cases, the sensei, they usually go on to become great heroes in different eras in human history. So, in a roundabout way, you could say Hercules could be an offspring of the Emperor. I was literally just thinking demigods yeah. from mythology. So. Exactly, which is why he was saying, like, oh, they must be worshipping, like, demigods to you people. And that's when Kitten basically said, like, yeah, the Inquisition know about them and started exterminating them because they they violate Imperial canon. And then that's the point where basically the Emperor just loses it, hence why this, the... Warp storms he unleashes throughout the galaxy. Uh, but of course. I mean... Also, the... if if Hercules was a... Oh, what's it called? A sensei. sensei. Mm -hmm. That would make the Emps Zeus. And that would give me another reason to hate him. You do have that. Okay. Uh, next point... The Dark Age of Technology. I'm not going to dive into that because, honestly, that is... Long night. Yeah, that's basically uh, a whole, you know, can of worms, and I would rather let the commenters talk about that one. So if you guys want to explain the Dark Age of Technology in the comments, I greatly encourage you to educate us on that. But the long and short of the Dark Age of Technology... It's in this period of time where basically technology evolved to a point where they started rising up against humanity, and it's also the reason why artificial intelligences are now forbidden, and why they are labeled as abominable intelligences and basically destroyed with extreme veracity. So, there's that. And the Men of Iron are basically uh, sentient machines that walk around and they're, 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 they're essentially androids. But... I can only think of maybe one that might still be walking around in 40k today. I'm not sure of that, though. Again, commenters, I turn to you. Now, to... Which one do you know of? I don't know the name of it, but I do know that when he was encountered, he basically made a statement culminating to the point that it's funny how humanity look at me and are completely afraid. But really all I see is just a bunch of scared children that don't know what to do uh, when faced with the unknown. Or something to that effect. Oh, I like him. Uh, he also goes off killing humans recklessly. And hence That's why he was, cool. tracked on, he was tracked in the first place. I, I would pretty much ballpark him in like HK-47 <laughs> turf. If really okay, now you just made me love him. <laughs> worse crap okay to, i adore hk i was gonna say to be fair hk 47 was like one of the best things to come out of knights of the old republic it really was and revan eh. yeah okay honestly just a small little sidebar it's actually a damn shame that when knights of the old republic 2 came out they actually wound up cutting out a huge side story that involved hk 47 at least he's in it. Yeah. Sometimes it's just a matter of being in it. Okay. Dude, if I got... Uh, to, sorry, to one more thing on the side note. Yeah? I want um, Knights of the Old Republic to be remastered. That is all. I don't have anything to go against that because honestly, I kind of want to see a revamped version of that. Yeah, it did not age Literally well. Literally, Bioware. So, although, although just running off it again, I'm sorry. This is just this is just a ramble now. Um, many a true nerd had, uh, did a whole series on Knights of the Old Republic as it had been like ages since he had played it, uh -huh. and he's playing it through and he's realizing something as he's playing it because it was made by Bioware, which also made Mass Effect. He realized that Knights of the Old Republic is basically just the prototype of Mass Effect. Oh yeah, they use a lot of the same actors too. That 
I don't know how to feel about that. Bioware also, yeah, they, Bioware uses a lot of the same actors for just things in general. No, because not- you'll catch the same voices in Knights of the Old Republic and then Mass Effect and Dragon Age. No, no, not even that. If you really, if you kind of look at the kind of base idea of what Mass Effect is and go back and look at the themes that they used in Knights of Old Republic into Mass Effect, they kind of mesh up very well. Like Taris. Yeah, they're both space, and I love both of them. Yeah, because like Taris is Eden Prime. Um, you you touch the obelisk, you're able to talk to everything. Revan apparently knows every freaking language possible except for Rom. He's wonderful. So. Well, I guess I was schooled in many ways too. That's good. Karth and Caden. All right, back back to the. No, those are the flat out the same actor. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. (laughs) Don't be. I mean, hey, I'm learning something too. Okay, so Lord Inquisitor Cortiers Torquemada, or Torquemada Cortiers. So, this guy, he is... Is he just supposed to be Cortez? No, he's basically, uh... He's based off of an actual Inquisitor during the Spanish Inquisition, hence why he has he has a, a thick Spanish accent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I thought he was Cortez, because of the thicker accent, and Cortez is a very known purging individual yeah but i don't think it's in reference to cortez and the aztecs and that nothing to do it basically is he is based off of an actual inquisitor that was known to be incorruptible and anyone who actually tried to to buy him off were basically uh punished twice as more than anyone who confessed so he, he, he was a very respected quote unquote individual yeah. but it is the inquisition we're talking about from actual history um but Torquemada Cortez, he is the High Protector of Formosa Sector and a High Lord Inquisitor. So in other words, he is basically one of the top Inquisitors throughout the entire organization. And he was basically most famously appointed uh, his position because in the process of an Inquisitor explaining how he was able to purge an entire demonic front... Uh, he showed off a crystal that was infused with demonic energy, and this guy was basically proposing to the other Inquisitors during the whole breakdown and debriefing that they could use these crystals to basically continue to purge out all heretics and blah, blah, blah. Cortez, in response, and basically disgusted with the display that he was seeing from this Inquisitor, goes down with his hammer and smashes the crystal to destroy it, and when he does, he basically turns his weapon to the Inquisitor that was making the debrief and accused him of heresy in pretty much every form of the definition. Now, when an Inquisitor challenges another Inquisitor in such a way, this is basically something that could end up with basically someone dying in the process. But Cortez basically produces a hourglass just out of nowhere and places it, and he says... I will prove that he's a heretic before that sand runs out in that hourglass. And he basically starts uh, grilling the Inquisitor for all the information about the the process of how he purged all the demons and whatnot. But in the process of doing so, he revealed that the Inquisitor used demonic practices, he used demon engines, he used uh, a whole bunch of people to as you know innocent fodder, to fuel these rituals to get rid of the demonic uh, incursion was tainted to his very soul. And it turned out that the demon that was influencing him was doing so, so that way he could infect the rest of the Inquisition. And then he summarily executed the Inquisitor in the process. By pointing out all of this, successfully accusing a heretical Inquisitor in front of everyone, he was promoted to his rank of Lord Inquisitor then and there on the spot. So this guy was above and beyond his his station at this point. He was just that good. Huh. Uh, I am. And in another story, he basically was able to free an entire forge world from a heretical incursion 
I don't know if it had anything to do with the uh, demons or cultists were basically taking over an entire forge world, but he freed the entire forge world in the process. And as a gift from the Adeptus Mechanicus of that forge world, they gave him an, uh, a cyborg familiar, which is a twin-headed eagle. That he basically oh, okay, just... so that's who he's talking to in the scene, then? What was that? That's who he's talking to in the scene, then? No, he's talking to, to others in his retinue at that point, because at this point in modern 40k, he is so old that he can't really do much. So even he understands this, but he still has enough brass balls to pretty much get in front of an entire company of Grey Knights and charge into battle against Abaddon the Despoiler in the 13th, 13th Black Crusade in the Agrippina sector. So even in his old I'm age, sorry, in the what sector? Agrippina. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Not that's what I, not what I heard either, Chelsea, so... Okay. <laughs> Hold on, I feel like I'm missing something. What it was... sounded like you said agro-penis. Like an aggressive penis. And I heard the same thing. Huh. So and that could entirely before? be the purpose. And whoever made up that sector did so with the entire purpose of making a giant dick joke. I thought that I can was see originally that happening. just a reference to the name Agrippa, but now that I see that... I Maybe it is! It. Hmm. Maybe it's the other! Who knows? Yeah. But yeah, he is basically an inquisitor of the Ordo Mal uh, Malaeus. So in other words, essentially demon hunters. And he's always working close closely with Grey Knights if the need arises. So he's a badass in the Order, and someone worth respecting to some degree. Though the rest of the of the whole thing of basically monkeys in a barrel coming out and, and defeating the enemy, that was too funny for me. Because you guys remember the Joe Caro, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he does use a lot of their technology in many of his uh, in many of his uh, adventures. So, okay. So since there wasn't really much more in terms of a lore dive, and it was just more TTS's uh, typical slapstick and just their world building, I think that's just going to be the end of it for now, guys. Uh, what do you think? Sounds good to me. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well then, uh, with that. I'm gonna turn over to our wonderful, uh, shit, did, did we say it was an AI? I mean, I, uh, the Inquisition probably have our heads, then again, we don't really care what the Inquisition thinks. Fair enough. The Mechanicus would have our heads, but they don't need to know. We could just throw it out there, and let's turn this over to our adept. <laughs> let's be honest it's, it's, it's it, we can lie and say it's a it's a virtual intelligence we're turning it over to our, our over to our adeptus Edie, Edie? it's Edie. 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 Let, let let's let the machine spirit take it from here we we got more repairs to do around the ship <laughs> my my chaos beats got into something again mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i kind of need to get back in the forge i got projects and stuff all right so see you later guys thank you for joining us for introducing friends we hope you have a happy and safe existence outside the warp <laughs>